absolute value inequalities. Now, here's the deal with absolute values. If you remember, absolute value was when we would get two different answers because the negative one would work and the positive one would work. You remember that mm -hmm. from the last chapter? Yeah. It wasn't necessarily all of our favorites, but okay. So when an inequality has an absolute value, we have to remove the absolute value. Just like we did with equations, we had to get rid of the absolute value and split it into two parts. Some of us did that better than others. And just that's just honestly, some of us got that and some of us didn't very well. So we have to we have to do the same thing here. We have to get rid of the absolute value because when it's trapped in there, we can't do anything with it. So we have to get rid of the absolute value in order to graph the solution or give our interval notation. Okay. So just a quick reminder, when we saw this, let's say it was that, if we saw something that looked like that, what we were supposed to do is these two bars are a hint that we need to split it into two statements. The two statements were that x plus 5 could equal a negative 10, this stuff in here could equal a negative 10, or the stuff in here could equal a positive 10, and that is how we could make this true. Because the absolute value of negative 10 would be 10, and the absolute value of 10 would also be 10. Right? So we're going to do something kind of similar to this with how inequality. That? I forgot. That two lines, how do you call that? Absolute value. Is it absolute value? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Absolute value. Or you could just call it the two lines, but that's not what everybody else is going to call it. Okay. So here is the difference when we're dealing with absolute value. We still have to split it into two parts. Okay. Now, are you guys, okay, so I'm going to ask you this because I know how I like to explain it, but do you guys think you're better at memorizing or like getting a concept? Both. Both. Okay, she's better at both. Like memorizing a rule, like memorizing memorizing a rule or getting the concept and being able to apply that concept to the situation. Like giving an example or memorizing. You're not good at memorizing? See, I never was either, so I, I like to teach it as a concept. Yeah. Okay, we'll go with the concept. Okay. If you remember, back when we actually first talked about absolute value, I said, we said in the notes and everything, and I said, Absolute value, you can think of that as the distance from zero. So when we just did that problem and it said the absolute value of something is 10 from zero, if we go 10 to the left, that's a negative 10, right? Mm -hmm. And if we go 10 to the right, that's positive 10. Those were our two points that worked. And then we would solve, mm -hmm. okay? So something similar happens here with inequalities. This is saying the distance from zero is greater than Two. So let me just give you a quick example. Let's say that I tell you my house is greater than two miles from where we are right now. Does that make sense? I could go more than two miles that way, or I could go more than two miles that way, or more than two miles that way. And all of those could be true, right? Now, when we're talking about numbers, we're only going two directions, left and right, so that makes it easier. But do you see that the boundary would be like the fence at two miles this way and two miles that way or whichever way? So here's what happens. If our absolute value is greater than two, it's like we have this fence, two units to the right of zero at two and two units to the left of zero at negative two. This is like our fence, it's a very high fence. Things can't get through the fence, okay? But now here's what we're saying. The distance from zero is greater than or more than two units from zero. Does that mean it's going to be inside the fences or outside the fences if it's more than two units away? Outside. Outside the fences, right? Does that make sense? Because it's more than two units away? In here, it'd be like zero, one unit away or one and a half or something like that. If it's more than, if it's a greater than, it's got to get outside the fence. Your dog has escaped. He's more than two units away from your house. He's outside the fence. So here's what that means. So this is where X could be, or this is where X could be. Now, how do we write this? X is 
less than negative 2. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And over here it would say x is greater than, two. greater than positive 2. And because it's these two separate areas, this is an or statement. Either one could be true. Does that make sense? So what are we trying to look at here? If we graph it, it looks exactly like what we've just drawn. Where is your arrow start? It sh should be start from minus two, right? It's, no, starting from zero. This because we're going, zero? we're going more than two this way and more than two units that way. Because we're already starting from zero because this absolute value means distance from zero. zero. So like if I go from zero only okay. to here, so, um, I've only okay. gone one space. So it should be like greater than two. Yeah, so like three units to the left or three units to the right, or four units to the left and four units to the right, or five, anything bigger than two. So is it safe to say x is zero? No, not x is zero. No. X is just some number. And we're trying to find numbers that have a distance from zero that's more than two. Okay? So if we're drawing, here's our inequality. So x could be less than negative two, or x could be greater than positive two. If we're drawing this, we're going to have what type of circle, what kind of boundary circle would go on the negative two? Uh, okay. Open, and then it would go to the left, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. And then here we'd have open, and it would go to the right. How would we write that in interval notation? Wait a second. What did you say? Oh, maybe you didn't say anything. I just thought I heard an answer. Infinity. So if we're doing this one, if we're doing this left hand side, negative infinity. Negative infinity up until. So we need one two. or two. You're going to have two separate areas. Two separate. For a greater than, you're going to have two separate areas. So negative infinity. And remember, this always gets parentheses. What does this one get? Parentheses. And then remember, we put the union because now we've got another area over here. How do we write this one? Two. 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 And then comma. Infinity. infinity. And then infinities always get parentheses. And the two gets parentheses. parentheses. Now, this is going to be different than an or statement in, in this. If you have two separate areas, they're always going to match up with either both parentheses or both brackets. Okay, because you can't switch them because whatever it is here is all, is what it's going to become down here. Oh, okay. Okay, so they're either both going to be filled in closed circles or they're both going to be open circles. You're never going to have like one of each in an absolute value problem because they're not giving you two separate statements. They're giving you one statement that we're breaking up into two separate statements. Okay, so the idea is greater than means you're going to be going to the outsides because you're going farther than those boundaries. So what do you think less than is going to mean? The middle, right? You're going less than if it was a two, less than two units. So it's got to be the middle. So that's the thing with um, absolute value is you either have the outsides or you have the middle. There's no other options, okay? Mm. So let me erase all these great pictures. So when the absolute value is greater than a number, we will remove the absolute value by changing the problem to an or inequality. And that or inequality is going to be the two outside sections, two separate areas. So it's going to be an or inequality. Yeah, greater than. Is it messing you up? Are those blanks messing you up, Sally? My eyes. Oh, your eyes are messing you up. Okay. Are we good to go to the example? Mm -hmm. Did I miss one? Oh, that's the time I put them both. We'll come back to that in a second. But this first example goes with the or, so. Go ahead, Sally. Okay. You guys are adults. <laughs> I'm not going to cry if you guys get up and leave. I mean, I don't necessarily want you just to get up and leave. But. <laughs> okay, bye. All right. Solve, graph, and give interval notation. So all three of them. And notice this one is greater than, right? So we're going to split it up into two separate inequalities, just like we did on that last one. 
So let's think about this. If this is a six, where are the boundaries this time? Negative six. Six to the left and six to the right. Mm -hmm. Right? That's where our fences are, our boundaries. Mm -hmm. So does it make sense? Six and negative six mm -hmm. because of this? Mm -hmm. And since it's a greater than, we're dealing with an or statement or the outsides. So this one's different because what's in here is the 4x minus 5. So 4x minus 5 is over here. And 4x minus 5 is over here. Those are the two spots where it could be. It's on the outsides. Before it was just an x in there. So the x was over here or the x was over there. Does that make sense? So anytime it's a greater than, you're going to put this on the two outsides. Okay. Now what does this actually say? It says 4x minus 5 is what compared to negative 6? If it's to the left of. It's less than, and then because of this, it's less than or equal to. That tells us these are filled in, filled in circles, or they're going to be. Or what does this one say? 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to positive 6. So that's how we get to the outsides, right? The 4x minus 5 is either over here to the left of negative 6, or it's over here to the right of positive so 6. Pretty much. We just have to change the sign and the negative. On the one side. On the one yep. side. And the other side just, just stays like the same. Just like we did in the, in yep. the, in yep. the, in the absolute value <laughs> equations. <laughs> yep. The difference this time is you've got to switch the inequality sign also. Also. Uh, no, just, yeah, not just not the number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But visually, do you see what's happening? If you're going further to the left and further to the right, and that can help you set up your thing so now we actually have to solve this one how would we solve this um, add five add five i have confused to put the um the 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 sign greater than less this one than. okay so does it make sense that if it's greater than six units from zero it's going over here like greater seven or eight or nine if you just open like that, it's okay. greater but, than but less yeah, than. Okay, but don't think of direction here. Think of distance, okay? I'm greater going than. from zero, I'm going more than six units, some direction. More than, six. more than six units away. So I might be going more than six this way, or I might be going more than six this way. So six is our boundary. So my 4x minus 5 might be over here to the left of negative 6. Or it could also be over here to the right of positive 6, because that 6 is the boundary. And anytime it's a greater than, it's always going to be the two outsides. Greater than. Greater than. It's farther away from 0. It's far away from 0. It can't be by the 0. It has to be far away from the 0. And greater. If it's like less than, it should be like... The middle. The, the middle. Yep. So it's between minus six and plus six. If this was a less than, yes. Okay. Yep, and it'll always be that way with absolute values. But you you just come from the zero point. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we um, added five. Should we change our sign? No. Nope. Less than or equal to. Then what else do we have to do? Divide by four. Okay. So we get a fraction, and that's okay because it's really easy. We're just going to put it on the number line anyway. And then over here, we're going to do the same steps, right? Add 5. 4x. This is 11. Don't change the sign. And then what else do we have to do? 5 by 4. So x is greater than or equal to. This is, uh, you could leave it as 11 over 4, or if you wanted to, it's 2 and 3 fourths. OK. Now, if we're going to draw the picture, I'll draw the picture up here. Which one is on the left for these two? Uh, one over four. Negative one fourth. And then the two and three fourths is over here. What sort of boundary points do both of them get? Because they're the same this time, right? Uh, build in. Build in circles. 
And then if you think about it, which direction will we go from the negative one fourth? To the left. To the left. And how about from the two and two, th two and three fourths? To the right. To the right. Mm -hmm. And that is our solution as far as graphing it. And then about interval notation. It's two separate areas, so does it make sense we'll have the U in the middle? What will this side, how would we describe this side? Infinity. Negative infinity, infinity to negative one fourth. Mm -hmm. Infinities always get parentheses, and the negative one fourth gets bracket. And then we've got what's going to be on the right side here? Negative, I mean, two, uh, three fourths. Three fourths is the lower one. And then what do we put over here? Infinity. infinity. And then the in, uh, infinities always get. Parentheses and the two and three fourths gets brackets. brackets. Okay, so again, this is our interval notation. This is our graph. And this is our solve this and this with the or. Okay, so all three of those are giving us the same information just in different ways. So yes, if you want to try and remember that, anytime it's greater than, it's always the two outsides. So it'll be less than the negative one and greater than the positive one when you, when you write this inequality. So greater the, than the so 4x outside. minus 1 is less than the negative one out here. It's greater than the positive one out here. That's anytime you have a greater than with the absolute value. Now, one thing I'll say because this happens in my classes in high school also. We do these inequalities and the inequalities don't seem that bad. And then we do the absolute value inequalities and maybe they don't seem that bad, but then we start mixing them together. So here's what you need to remember. The only time you break it into two parts, the only time you break it into two parts yourself is when you see these two lines. That's telling you break it into two parts, okay? A normal inequality like we did in the other two uh, sections, we never broke those into two parts, did we? They gave us one statement, we solved it. Or they gave us two statements, we solved it. We didn't ever break it into multiple parts, unless we took that one and statement and broke it into two parts. I guess we did do that. But other than that, we don't break it into two parts with those. those. Are we okay to go on, or do we need some more time to ponder? All right. Now, here's one that's a little bit different. And the reason it's different is because you may remember this from equations. The absolute value part is not by itself yet. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The first thing we always have to do with absolute values is get them, the fancy word is isolated, get them by themselves. So how do we start getting this by itself? We can't distribute with absolute values. It's not a parenthesis. It does something. Um, so we have to just get rid of this stuff. So then just uh, do negative 4 minus 3. Can't do that either. Why? You add 4? You You're four. one step ahead of me. That's what we have to do first. Remember, we take off the layers, right? Yeah. Take off the layers. So the first thing we do is add the 4 to cancel this out. So this is negative 3 now times the absolute value of x. And that doesn't change this. This is negative 12. Then we're ready for your step. And we're going to do what to get rid of this negative 3? Divide it. By Divide negative by negative three. 3. Cancel. So now we have absolute value of x. And now we have a 4. And what do we have to do here? Change this side. We've got to switch it. OK. So now what do we know about 4? Negative. For the one I didn't know. Our boundaries? Full and negative full. Yep. And all that's here is the x, right? So x is either over here or over here. This time is less than. So inside. So no, it's not a less than anymore. Because it was up here, but down here is where oh, we you are. You have to look at okay. So it's still a greater than. Oh. Okay. Outside. So it's out here or out here. 
So this says x is less than or equal to negative 4, or x is greater than or equal to positive 4. And we're done there because it's just an x, right? There's no solving. X is already by itself. So what should our graph look like up here? Yeah. What sort of boundary? Point. Um, minus infinity. Yeah, close. And then you're right. Negative two. Minus uh, negative four. Negative four. Infinity always get parentheses. The negative four gets bracket. bracket, and then union, and then we have positive four. Positive four. And infinity. Infinity. Infinities always get parentheses. The four gets bracket. Bracket. So here's here's the difference between the two types. The other two examples that we just looked at, the absolute value was already by itself right at the beginning, right? In this one, we had to do some work to get the absolute value by itself down here. Once we have that absolute value by itself, now those two bars are telling us, now break it into its two parts. Then, but you can't do that until it's by itself, until it's isolated. And whenever you design inside or outside the value, you have to look at the latest one. Yep. But not the and we actually haven't talked about less than yet, but here we go, less than. And less than just means you are talking about the inside. We change it to an and inequality. And so it'll always be the middle. Okay. Do we like filling in the blanks or not? Is that just a pain? No, 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 no. You like filling the blanks? Yeah. Not for the keep test. your attention a little bit? Yeah, the, not on the test? Not for the test. Well, yeah, on the test, right. you have to fill in a lot of blanks. <laughs> in fact, you just fill in space. Just write some stuff. Makes it hard. I like numbers, not words. Oh, okay. All right, so let's take a look at this one. This is kind of like the last one we did. Because remember, we have to get this part by itself. So what do we have to do first? Subtract. We got to peel off the layers, right? So we got to get rid of the nine first. We subtract nine. Now, again, just as a reminder, the reason that we can't combine the 9 and the 2 is because the 2 is multiplied by the absolute value. It's stuck with that. It's grouped there. And the 9 is not. So we have to be careful. So negative 2 times 4x plus 1. And this is greater than negative 6. Okay. What else do we have to do? Multiply 2 times distribute. Can't distribute with absolute values. Oh. Divide. Divide, divide by, by two, negative, two. negative 2. Cancel that. Negative 2. So now we have absolute value of 4x plus 1 and the 3. And because we divided by this negative, what do we have to do? It's now. There we go. We've got a less than. Finally, right? Now we've got our two bars. What do they tell us? Well, they tell us we've got boundaries where and where? 3 and... Why you didn't solve that until to get x? We can't yet because it's trapped inside the absolute values. We have to get it out of the absolute values before we can solve it for x. Yep, it'll be inside. But where are our boundaries? Three. Three and three. negative three. Negative three. Right? three and why it is negative three? Because remember, this oh, oh, is. This is, it. Okay, it's the inside. You just said it last mm -hmm. last problem. Okay, so where does the 4x plus 1 go? It has to go in here. It has to be somewhere in the middle. Okay. Now, again, this is where I like that other notation. So I'm going to write it down, and you guys may not let me leave it this way. But negative 3, 4x plus 1. Three. Does it make sense? 4x plus 1 is in between those two, the negative 3 and the positive 3. And then it's just a less than. So we've got the negative 3 is the furthest to the less left, and then the 3 is the furthest to the right. 
So do you want to try and solve it then? No, we don't want to. Okay, we're going to break it up, I guess. So if we're, if we're going to break this up, how do we break this up? Because we've seen these before, right? Compound inequality, section 3, 2. How do we break this up into the two parts, two statements? Do you have to write it like that? I no, guess you do, right? I mean, it just, like I said, it just makes a lot of sense to me because you're seeing the negative three, the four plus four X plus one and the three in that order. And so it makes a lot of sense just to write it that way because that's how it works. But you don't have to. You can think of it as this. Negative three is less than four X plus one. And four X plus one is less than positive three. We wouldn't have Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Does that make sense? That's that's the and statement that would go with that. You just need to make sure both of these is tr are true. Both of them are true. Okay. So what are the steps we're going to do to solve this? Stop here. Well, you could <laughs> stop here, but you're not going to be done. It's, it's not bad. Our goal is to get the x by itself, right? Uh, <laughs> so here's the x. Subtract one. Subtract one. Stop here. Four x subtract one. Then what else do we do? Divide by four. Divide by four. I fall. So negative one x. Do we switch the sign? You have to switch the x and switch the sign. I mean, initially we don't switch the sign, but we do want the x to be first. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. You could if you wanted to. So you could write x is greater than negative 1. And, and and then we do the same steps here, right? Subtract 1. 4x is less than 2. Then same thing, divide by 4. So x is less than 1 half. So if we're thinking about our graph, one half a half. Same thing. It means the same thing. Because what you're really saying is a half or one half, and they, they mean the same thing. You don't like that, do you? I'm confused. Technically it's one half. One and a half. Or half. One one yeah. half not so one half one half which half means, is one by two right yeah it's the same thing that's why i say if you say a half, a half or one half it means the same thing okay so what sort of boundary points do both of these get because with absolute values they always get the same open. kind open. they're both open 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 and then what area is going to get shaded? We don't even we don't even have to check because this was an absolute value, right? And it was a less than absolute value, so it's automatically going to be the middle. What? Okay. If if it was an absolute if it was a less than absolute value and it was the less middle than. here, it has to be the middle when we're done. Okay. Now you could do it. You could say, okay, greater than negative one, less than one half. Where do both of them work? In the middle. But in these, in absolute values, it's always going to be the middle if you're doing it that way. Oh, and then how do we do interval notation? Negative 1. Negative 1 to 1 half. And what sort of grouping symbols do we use? Uh, parentheses. Parentheses. And they're both parentheses because they're both open circles. She's breaking into song. She must be very happy. Okay, so again, if you wanted to, you've got a couple ways to write this because do we understand the other way to write this would be negative one? Negative one is less than x, less than one half. This one. Okay, so you could write it as this with the and statement, or you could write that together as this. It means the same thing. 
because if you look at what this is, it's just broken apart, right? This this part right here says x is greater than negative one, which is what this says. And then this part says x is less than one half, which is what that one says. So you're really saying the same thing there. Okay, so the two things I'll remind you of, the only time we split it into its two into the two parts is when we see those two lines for absolute values. Okay, so don't let that mess you up on 3, 1 or 3, 2. If you don't see those absolute value lines, you just solve what's there. Okay. And then the other thing to remember is with absolute when it is absolute values, greater than always means the outsides, less than means the insides. Okay. Now, we do have our test next week. And just like the last test, I will be here at 6.30. And hopefully, the, I mean, tonight this room was open by, like, yeah, it, took early. You took a test. You got done early? Okay. So they were, it was, they were done by whatever. I came in at 6, and everybody was gone already. So, um, but I can't, I mean, I can't guarantee that will be next week. So I will be around at 6.30. If we need to find a different spot, we can, and I'll answer questions. If you just want to sit out in the lobby and I'll, on your notebook, I'll answer questions or whatever if you've got them. Um, I think the lab is open. The lab's open? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Where is the lab now? Because the place that used to be like the study hall room is now somebody's office, I think. The study hall is done at the end. It's done at the end? Well, no, that's the. Or is that is the it? lab? I think that's the study hall. The study hall is down here. Down here at the end? Very last room. Very, very last Okay. Room. So where you guys were when I saw you that one time and you were with yeah. uh, Molly and whatever. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's. Is that open during. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so when, well, you'll probably be in class. Are you in this class before this? Yeah. Okay, so you'll be in class if you're here. But anyway, but if anybody wants to meet, um, I will be here by 6.30 if you want to come at, ask questions. I will also answer questions for the first 20 minutes of class until 7.30 if you guys have questions. If you don't have questions, then I'm not just going to stand up here saying, hmm, we'll just sit here and wait and wait and wait. So we're testing over. Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. 